Hi everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my workshop. We're working on building an LBSC Titch live steam locomotive. This is what the chassis looks like so far. Of course, I did remove the brake system. As a reference, this is my hand. So it's a pretty small but intricate little project. And right here is a photograph that I printed off the internet of a, an, a nice example of a, the finished product of what we're making. And in this week's episode, I just it's relatively brief compared to others. We'll cover making the steam inlet tube, a little cross piece, which also involves an oil fitting down here at the bottom that has a, it's a spring loaded with a ball bearing, little pressure fitting. So we'll talk about making that. I don't cover a lot of stuff. In the previous episode, we covered the exhaust, which had a lot about the machining of the threading of the copper tubes. So there's not a lot of repeat of that, but it is hopefully interesting and useful to you. And if you will just sit back, relax, enjoy, and hope it's, hope it's helpful if you're building a live steam locomotive like this. If you would, if you have any questions, please ask. I'll do my best to answer. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Help pass the word. I'm trying, I am trying to grow the channel, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you have a great week. Thanks, everybody started on the steam intake T and first thing I did was to chuck it by one of these turn the outside diameter smooth drill through and then drill and tap them these ones are 3 16 inch 40 not quarter inch 40 so got those both done and I chucked it by the tailpiece turned the outside diameter. I, went, I just left this the main body of it a little bit larger than 5 16 It's like 330 thou. This is a 5 16 inch long portion that I did turn down to 5 16 and then I just threaded it with the tailstock die holder and of course I drilled a 3 16 inch passage, steam passage. So this is how the steam will get into the steam chests this way now I have to reverse this and chuck it by this part here and I can uh, clean up the bottom part and prepare it for the oil filter well, the oil filler connection not much to it uh, clean face turn the outside diameter and drill us I think it's a 1 16th inch hole up into the passageway and uh, then th uh, drill and tap a little portion that the fitting can get fastened into. So here is the uh, oil fitting. It's made out of 5 16 inch hex brass. And I've just turned down a quarter inch portion here to 218 thou. I just threaded it 732nd 40. I deeply center drilled it like it says because that's where the little oil fitting will be on the bottom and I use a number 43 drill to um, drill through now I'll cut it off so I can reverse it and do the other side. Alright, part two of making the oil fitting. Took a piece of 5 16 inch brass and I, um, f machined the back side of it. I made a little um, holding fixture like uh, LBSC talks about. I used a piece of 3 8 inch round brass and I drilled it and tapped it for the 7 32nd 40 and then I uh, slit it four different ways. I'll, I'll pull it out and show when this is done, but I just wanted to show I threaded the piece in there and tightened it down and it has held it rock solid. I've been able to machine down the outside of this to the uh, 0.219 inch diameter and now I'm getting ready to thread it and then I'll ream it the 332nd, trim off any excess, and then seat the ball. I'll show those steps. Just wanted to Put a word in for these making these little fixtures that LBSC talks about, and you can even do it with a 5C collet chuck instead of a three jaw. Okay, I threaded the top part of the oil fitting <clears throat> with the 532nd or the 732nd by 40 uh, die in the tailstock die holder, and then I went ahead and offset from it. Says the book is particular about this, it says just an eighth inch worth of thread sticking out. So I started counting I put it use my um, DRO on the z-axis there to measure from the beginning of the thread to the end and I just shaved off a little bit on the end so now it's flush and clean 
and I'm going to ream out the 332nd inch center and leave a sharp edge there at where the reamer cuts so that I can um, seat the ball. I know that much you don't want to remove the sharp edge if you're going to seat a ball for the, the spring-loaded ball for the oil check valve. Here's a fitting reamed out. It barely took any metal off there. You can see just on the very end, but I used tap paste on the reamer again. I love this stuff, this tap paste. So we're all good to go, ready to seat the ball and remove the fitting. The oil fitting is basically done, except for I need to seat a ball bearing on top of it. Now the book calls for using an eighth inch ball bearing here. Uh, here's my collection of ball bearings and springs and stuff <clears throat> that I've made throughout the years. I have a huge selection of McMaster Car 532nd inch stainless steel and 532nd inch regular steel bearings. Um, some quarter inch stainless steel. You can see the yellow. Those of you that are familiar, you'll know that comes from McMaster Car. While we're here, I got some extra little oil fittings and some spare um, cylinder drains that I made for the Allen Mobile. So I keep all this stuff in one of those um, fishing tackle containers. Also happen to have a selection of springs, uh, eighth inch by quarter inch stainless steel springs, and then some larger eighth inch by three eighths inch stainless steel springs that were for oilers for the Allen Mogul. Um, for this purpose, I just measured the inside of the space with a 532nd inch stainless steel ball bearing inside there. And I think it'll be perfect for the little quarter inch one. So I'm going to try that and we'll see how well that works. Hopefully it won't be a, an issue using the 532nd inch stainless steel ball versus the eighth inch. I even went to my favorite Ace Hardware store today to see if they had an eighth inch steel ball bearing and they did not. The smallest one they had and they were chrome, not stainless, the, uh, were 532nds just like this one. So. I'm going to use this. This is the same size that's in the oil pump. Oh, excuse me, the uh, water pump, the axle pump. So I'm hoping it's okay. I just need to take it. I'm not going to film this because it'd be hard to do with one hand, but take it and give it a nice smack with my favorite ball peen hammer. Not too hard, not too soft. Just make a little seat there for it. Here's a little bushing with 732nd 40 bushing that I made and held in the 5C collet chuck. It's made out of 3 8 inch brass and I decided I'm going to collect these things. I tried to engrave it with my little Dremel engraver but it didn't show so I wrote on it with a sharpie. And I'm going to collect these things in a little Altoid tin. Now that the steam inlet work is done, the next thing I need to do is to make a, the connections that will connect the oil pump to the steam inlet and I'll be using eighth inch copper tubing for that and I did make when I made the water connections I made some extra cones and one extra nut however it's not the, this nut does not fit 732nd by 40 threads so I'll need to make up an extra one of those I'll probably make a few extras and I did want to point out this resource here where it, it, this is exactly what LBSC talks about in his book, but this is from the IBLS website. They have a whole section on union fittings and nuts, and um, this is exactly the, the dimensions. It gives you a nice graphic form and uh, specific instructions basically about how to make these things. So check that out as a resource for you. I believe I covered this stuff in more detail when I did the water lines, but to simply put the um, for making the nuts, chucked up some hex brass. This is quarter inch hex brass stock. Center drilled it and drilled it through the length. I went uh, 350 thousandths basically with a number 10 drill. And next I'll come back and go 3 16 inch deep with a number, oh, sorry, uh, other way around. This is a number 30 drill which gives clearance for the eighth inch pipe. And um, I went through the whole distance basically and enough for the cutoff tool. Next, I'll come back and go 3 16 inch deep with a number 10 drill, which is tapping size for the 7 32nd 40. Okay, there's the number 10 drill and the tapping size hole for the 7 32nd 40. And just here we are hand tapping the 7 32nd 40 
using the um, tailstock and the little holder I have here. This is a homemade holder. I'll show you how it goes. It goes. I use these um, <clears throat> tap holders, and they sit inside this housing, which goes on my tailstock tapping and die set. All right, so now we have the hole tapped. If that'll show up or not. And um, all we got to do basically is cut it off. I'll chamfer the edges a little bit to make it look pretty, but then cut it off at the overall length is 219 thousandths. All right, here I made a little batch of four of the nuts for the eighth inch pipe in the 732nd 40 thread. And I've got, well, there's three of them there and one in here. I'm getting ready to just shave off, trim up the back side of it. And I got my little number 30 drill there so I can run it through just to make sure I have good clearance in the back for the quarter, for the eighth inch pipe and then uh, hold, I'll just re repeat that for all four of them and the batch will be finished. All right silly me I lost track I actually made five of them after I get done cleaning up the back and um, drilling out with the 30 number 30 drill I take the um, end tap one more time the bottoming tap and go go through the threads and clean them out with a little pipe cleaner just to make sure they're ready, you know, clear of any swarf and good to go. So there's one nicely fitted to the bottom, and we can go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me, make up one half of the tube for that one tomorrow. Now that we've made the extra eighth or quarter inch hex nuts for the eighth inch piping, I pulled out and I test fitted some of the copper cones as well found one that fit really good on the eighth inch copper tubing as you can see I shined up the copper tubing with some sandpaper to get ready to silver solder so I'll do that and while I'm silver soldering I'm also gonna silver solder these nuts onto the uh, copper steam intake pipes just like we had done for the exhaust so we'll get that done tonight Normally, if you're going to silver solder something on the copper pipe, you want to have the nut slipped over there too. But I'm not cutting the copper tubing to fit just yet. I'm going to just put that copper cone on the end, and then it'll be ready to uh, test fit in the chassis once I have everything installed. All right, a productive little evening in the shop here. Here's the cone, the copper cone, silver soldered onto the end of the pipe the eighth inch copper tubing with the new nut that we just made on there. It fits good and I put the little piece of tape so the nut won't fall off. Also here is the steam intake with the silver soldered nuts on there. I used a little bit less, didn't clog them up as bad as I did on the exhaust. So came in good. It fits all nice. The oil fitting is down there with the ball bearing and the spring in it. And that will connect here to this, which whenever I make the pipe, it will connect to the bottom of the oil tank. So the next project really is working on the oil tank. I got to rig up a mounting and then put a little hole with a filler cap in the top there. So we'll, we'll cover those things next. I think we're at a good stopping place because the next thing for me to do is to work on modifying this oiler and figuring out a mounting thing for it and rigging it up and then piping it into the bottom of the steam inlet which is here so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it now I hope this has been interesting and informative for you if you would at least please give me a thumbs up and make a comment or question if you have any I always appreciate that but the thumbs up are, are nice to see and they kind of keep me motivated and going so thanks everybody Next week, we'll, or next time, whenever that is, we'll cover the installation of the oiler, and we'll be that much closer to getting ready to run on air. Thank you.